What you're about to watch is a replay of a live stream that was originally recorded on August 6th. In this video, I talk mostly about head shape and character design. Hope you enjoy it. Just getting warmed up here and uh, am I a teacher? No, no, I'm not a teacher. I'm an artist. Um, I, well, I do have art lessons on TikTok and YouTube, but uh, no, that doesn't make me a teacher. I uh, am an artist, though. I uh, sell my paintings and uh, photo photography through galleries, but uh, no, not a teacher. Uh, I'm just, uh, I don't really have a goal what I'm doing here today. I'm just uh, drawing different shaped uh, faces. And uh, I'll be answering questions about art, uh, painting, drawing, um, all that kind of thing. If uh, there are any questions about my my art, I'm happy to answer those kinds of questions. And uh, yeah, I hope you're all having a great uh, Saturday night. Or... Uh, well, it's Sunday morning, depending on where you are in the world. It's uh, 7.30 in the part of Canada that I'm currently in. You're thinking about posting your art? Yeah, you should. It, uh, if you're thinking about a career in, in art, it's uh, really important to try to develop your um, social media anyway, you know, or at least have to, you have to become somewhat comfortable with them. Um, having your art in the in the world and allowing people to you know, critique it and, uh, that's just part of the job of being a professional artist I mean, there are a lot of people that make art uh, who don't want to have that as their job or as their career so if that's the case then yeah there's no there's no need to post it It's pretty hard to make a career if you don't post your art somewhere. Ever ventured a fabric design? Uh, no, I haven't done anything lately. In university, um, that's when I kind of did, when I was doing my uh, fine arts degree, I did a lot of different kinds of art. I did printmaking and photography and sculpture. And at that time, I had a sewing machine and I made a few suits made one suit out of felt so that was pretty cool um, but no certainly nothing recently just um, not not for lack of want just uh, there's only so many hours in the day I don't really have a plan for this face I'm just kind of scribbling in areas uh, as it as they come to me and um, I don't know maybe he'll, he'll, this person will have facial hair uh, maybe not I'm not drawing anyone in particular here I wish you could stay. Where do I live in Canada? I live just outside Toronto in a little city called Oakville. Do I do graphics as well? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I started with comics. So and uh, I kind of evolved from comics to uh, the fine art world. So now I, I most of my art that I, um, I guess, generate my income from is from uh, oil paintings. So you can see on my website, it's, um, it's Mark Liam Smith. Same as my username, markliamsmith.com. Uh, you can see uh, all of the 
the way I paint, uh, the oil paintings and so on, or you could go to my Instagram or anything like that. Uh, yeah, I, I tend not to put my own work on TikTok. Uh, that's usually, uh, for TikTok, I usually just put uh, tutorials, you know, teaching people how to draw new artists, mostly. Uh, thank you. I wish you'd stay. Oh, nice. Thank you so much. Do I typically begin a drawing with an outline, like faces, me too, or just prefer to? Uh, yeah, I, I typically do have a, a loose outline. Like, I'll show, I'll show you my template. Um, so pretty much all of my faces start with this same template. I actually have a, a YouTube video on this. Um, actually, I don't know if it, it might be YouTube or Patreon. I'm not sure. But uh, I'll, I'll outline the shape of the head. So, you know, they're bif different shapes. So I'll kind of decide, uh, do I want a, a circular head or an oval head or a square head or a rectangular head or an A triangle or a V triangle or a diamond head or a heart-shaped head? Those are the kind of major shapes. Once I have decided what I want, you know, in this case, it's an oval head, then I'll find the eyebrow line and the midline. And then from there, I'll usually drop in circles where I think the entire eyeball is. Like a lot of that will end up being covered up by, you know, eyelid. Let's say something like this. But uh, g generally it's five, one, two, th so one, two, three, four, five widths across is the size of one eyeball. And then, um, so after that, I'll do the length of the nose and it can be either a short nose or it can be a longer nose. Do the length, and circle on the nose, find the width of the nose like that, and then I'll go to the eyes, drop those down, and that's the width of the mouth. And then I'll typically draw a large circle for the entire kind of muzzle area, and then a smaller circle for the chin, and then that allows me to find where the bottom of the lip is as well. And so that's the basic template that I do. I may put some cheekbones in there for modeling, but I already have these kind of laugh lines here and then the temple lines here, and that shows where the head transitions from flat around to the side. Ears are typically, they go from the top of the uh, eyebrows to the bottom of the nose. So depending on if you have a shorter nose, typically you have shorter ears too. And uh, so that's kind of the template that I use for all of my faces, male and female, and uh, all kind of ages and everything like that. And then after that, it's just details, it's just variation. So I can show you some of those uh, right now. What did you study and did you go to art school? Uh, yeah, yeah, I went, I went, actually went to university for 14 years. I did a lot of university. So um, I, I have three bachelor degrees. Um, I have a, a science degree in physiology, it's a BSc, and I have a Bachelor of Arts degree in linguistics, and I also have a Bachelor of, of, of Fine Arts degree, a, BS, a BFA, in uh, drawing and painting. So I was in school for quite a while, and then I also did some grad, uh, graduate work some in linguistics. But uh, yeah, I've, I was kind of one of those forever perpetual students. Uh, Typically, when you're drawing male faces, they are more angular. And uh, that's reflected in the jawline here. So something like a sharp angle will uh, always give you a more of a masculine look. But, uh, you know, of course, these are just general rules. There are as many, um, not as many, uh, but there are a lot of examples uh, where these rules are broken. There's also this kind of inverted triangle that I put at the top of the nose as the uh, planes of the head um, transition from the bridge of the nose into the forehead. This inverted triangle is really important to try to um, consider, I guess, when you are thinking about shading. And uh, it doesn't really matter in, in little sketches like this. Uh, but when you're doing more studied uh, work, um, something like this area becomes incredibly important. There are so many different shapes for nose that um, I can't possibly cover them all here.
well, I mean, there are a lot of shapes for, for all of these different features. You're very underrated. I love your art. Oh, thank you so much. Um, looks like the Breaking Bad guy. Oh, Walter. Yeah. Oh, what talent you have. Inspire others, whether you're not or not. Thank you. Thank you, Steph. It's appreciated. Love the videos. Thank you. Cab girl, amazing. Difficulties the nose. Yeah, noses can be tricky. There are a lot of um, things to consider. There are a lot of different and very quick changes in the nose. Um, as a general rule, I would say that when it comes to drawing noses, the um, usually more feminine faces, you would you would uh, draw the nose with fewer lines, and more masculine faces faces have uh, have more lines in the nose. Also, uh, with age, uh, older faces typically have more lines in the nose and uh, and younger faces typically have fewer lines so those are just kind of guidelines to keep uh, keep in mind um, let me see I'll put some glasses on this guy and uh, Today, I just, uh, on my Patreon, I just released a video. Um, I have uh, always uh, produced exclusive videos on my Patreon that aren't available uh, on my YouTube or TikTok, but uh, today I released a video called How to uh, Use the Planes of the Face to uh, Improve Your Drawing. So I talk about how to take basically the, re the, uh, the round head and kind of break it up into planes, visualizing different planes, like here's one like this, here's another one. Here's another one, and you can kind of visualize these round shapes in terms, you know, if they were a bunch of different flat planes, and then that helps you when you go to um, shade your your head. Uh, wildlife carver interested in doing faces? Can the same principle be? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Kevin, you can um, you can use these principles. These principles are applicable not just to faces, but to uh, to all uh, subjects and not just drawing but yeah anything like uh, sculpture would work very well as, as the uh, the underlying principle that we're talking about here is how to take very complicated or, or complex shapes and uh, break them down into more uh, understandable or easier to use parts and uh, that's the whole uh, goal with uh, with these planes of the head that, that we use it's all about just breaking down complex shapes into more uh, relatable forms, something we can use. So whether that's um, wildlife or humans or sculptures, um, it all it all applies. And I uh, now that I have the planes of this head, I can shade it. You'll notice that I've switched from using this grip, which is using the point of my pencil to this grip, which is using the side. When you use the side of your pencil, it's much easier to shade. You have much more control. And uh, this is this is how I hold it. Basically, it's, I, I go with a three-fingered hold. The, uh, the uh, pinky and ring fingers are more there for stability. But I only hold my pencil with these three fingers primarily. So if the pencil is below, then I'm using the edge of my pencil to shade. And then if I bring it up above, like this, and I'm still just using the same three fingers all together. There are lots of different ways to hold a pencil, but this one I find gives me ultimate flexibility. You see this kind of motion that I have. I can, of course, use my wrist, but ultimately, um, for small details, fine details, the finger movement is maximized uh, with this grip here. You can try to avoid this. I, I, I see people doing this kind of grip like this. You're completely freezing out your fingers um, and you're completely limiting the, your pencil movement to movement of your arm or wrist. So if you, uh, if you haven't settled on this grip, then um, it's better not to. You can go with something like this, three, in a, three all at the same angle. This will give you maximum range. Look, I'm, I'm, my wrist is 
stationary here and it gives me maximum range just to um, but uh, it's up to you and usually you develop your your grip uh, very early on so it's uh, quite hard to get out of that once you have developed a pattern and you find something you like um, See what other uh, questions we have. What pencil grade do I usually use for sketching? Uh, yeah, in this case, this is an H, so one a step harder than the HB. And this happens to be a Stedler Mars Lumograph pencil. This is a German pencil, but you can sketch with anything. I was even sketching uh, with a uh, color pencil, and this is not. This one's not even a particularly amazing quality. It's just sort of a uh, generic. Um, colored pencil, but also good for um, sketching. So if we go with, um, I don't think I've done this. We'll go with an example of a rectangular face, which is typically a very masculine face, but uh, I'll, I'll try to do this uh, for more of a female head. So let's see what we got here. We'll go with the eyebrow line and the center line like we usually do and uh, drop in the eyes. Keeping in mind that the eye, five eye widths, one, two, three, four, five, is usually the, the width of a head. Um, Marco, hi, how you doing? And um, yeah, and then next we're gonna go with the nose. So we'll go with a narrower nose here. The width of the eyes, the width of the mouth is from the middle of the eyes. The fuller lip here. I have uh, separate tutorials on each of these facial features, so lip, nose, eyes, and so on. And uh, because all of these parts are pretty much isolated from each other, you can go into detail as much as you want. And, uh, you know, you can you know, do the lips in their entirety and then jump back to the eyes and so on. This li um, one thing you want to keep in mind when you're drawing lips is that the top lip is usually uh, more in shadow and the bottom lip is not and then underneath the bottom lip there's usually a little shadow of course all of these depend uh, just on your subject matter so but uh, those are some things to look out for so I'm going to go with a smaller chin but we are going with a rectangular head here so you know I don't mean literally rectangular when it's a rectangular head it's not a SpongeBob um, situation, so we do want to round it off. Um, what pen thickness do I use? Uh, hey, from LA, how you doing? I'm coming to you from Toronto, Canada. Uh, this is uh, just a colored pencil, actually. So, um, but uh, usually I use just an H pencil, something like that. You can draw with anything. You can draw with markers. Um, it doesn't matter. And uh, uh, Avignon, France. Bienvenue. Lips always look messy. Yeah. Um, so for the lips, I would recommend that you think about lips. Um, I'll just do a. Uh, I'll just jump away from this face for a moment and do a side uh, sidebar on lips. So lips. Um, usually you think about them. Uh, like there's a top lip and a bottom lip and then people to this little kind of area here this is this is called the, uh, the cupid's bow 
But uh, actually, you might want to think about it like this. Instead of just top and bottom, if you think about it, um, the top has three areas. So underneath that Cupid's bow, you can draw a circle. This is um, really, I think, a nice way to think about it. So um, top lip, bottom lip, under, and then you do this little uh, U-shape, little scoop, and a circle underneath it. Okay. The next two areas on the top lip are ovals, and they're kind of tilted up like that way and that way, so they tilt toward the middle. Okay, and the bottom lip is pretty much two ovals that tilt toward this point. So that's effectively what you want to look what you want to look for, and you're only going to see. Oops, I don't know why we blurred there. So uh, that's effectively what the shapes you want to look for. So you um, you're only going to see these in the extreme when the um, when the lips are very very full. Uh, but when you outline them, then you'll see this bump here. That's that uh, reflects the bottom of this circle. this and there'll be a little divot there uh, and then of course the top is more uh, is darker than the bottom there'll be some shadow underneath as well You have to sell the lip by uh, all of the rest of the shading around it as well. Lips don't exist in isolation, but that's that's pretty much the idea, the five areas. One, two, three, four, five. Can't draw shadows on the face. Yeah, shadows take some time to uh, to learn because then you you have to learn all about tone as well, and uh, and then also about form. So they are some of the. Hey Kim, how you doing? Good to have you in the chat. Hey Mark, I love these live tutorials. Watching all the way from West Coast BC. Nice. Welcome Chris. I have uh, I have some family out uh, west on the island. It's always a a real treat to be able to go out there. Some beautiful country out there. Is HB still good for drawing? Yeah, I HB is good for drawing. You can draw with anything, you know. Here's a B. Um, I tend to go with uh, with H, and the reason is it's, it's one step harder than HB. Um, for me, it doesn't smudge as much. I don't use a glove, and I don't use a piece of paper to protect my drawing, so um, I, I tend to prefer... Um, pencils that don't smudge as much. The downside is that it's not as dark. So what I will do is I'll go with an H and then I'll use a, a 2B or a 3B to get the really dark areas um, like like uh, pupils, for example. So okay, let me just blast through and uh, I think I'll Maybe just fill a whole page full of, uh... yeah, that, that may be a nice idea. I'll just fill a whole page full of, full of faces. Uh, grab this, grab this here. Uh, let me see. One. Okay. We'll do six. Uh, let's see how quick we can get through these. Wow. Uh, thanks for the rose. Practice is good. Yeah, I agree. Practice is it. Hello from Reunion Islands in the Indian Ocean. Wow, you are halfway around the world from me. I'm in uh, eastern Canada. Videos are great. Thank you. Love your tutorials. Want to get back to drawing? Yeah, you should. Saudi Arabia. Nice. Thank you. Welcome. 
Okay, let's go with um, <clears throat> uh, my my idea here is I'm going to show you my template that I use. So I, I do all of my faces, no matter what gender, how old, everything, uh, the same way. Head shape first. And uh, remember, we have different head shapes. We have circle, oval, square, rectangle, A, A triangle, V triangle, which is pretty much heart, uh, um, and then diamond. Okay. So let's go with... Let's go with a round face. So we'll bring it out all the way around. Here's the brow line. Typically the brow line on a, on a round face will be slightly higher than where I would normally go. And the nose will be shorter. Okay, uh, drop in the eyes. Instead of going for the five widths, there's a little more on, on the two sides. We're gonna have a, isolate all the features to the center of the face for, for these faces that are, that are more full for, uh, for very large people. And I've got the width of the nose here and the width of the mouth. Here's the, the muzzle and then the chin. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the chin up. So I'm not gonna bring the chin all the way down to the bottom of the head like here, I'm gonna bring the chin up and then put a line under the chin. So we're actually gonna have two lines. You have this kind of first chin line and then a second chin line. And this is gonna really sell the idea that we're looking at a, a larger head. Um, So we'll just blast through a lot of these faces. You don't want to put too many lines in the face uh, when it comes to uh, really large uh, heads because the um, lines typically uh, show either age or, um, or a lack of size. Can I make a tutorial on how to draw hair? Yeah, I have a TikTok. Check out my pla my uh, playlist on TikTok. I have a tutorial called um, draw How to Draw Four Kinds of Hair. So in that, I talk about uh, wavy, straight, curly, and then um, a frizzy kind of hair. So uh, yeah, and I go through the different kinds and styles. You can check that out. We'll go with a longer head here. Eyebrow line, center line, circles for the eyes, length and width of the nose, width of the bottom of the nose, find the mouth width, large circle for the muzzle, small circle for the chin pretty much sets itself up here. And uh, now I'll go with the top of the nose, which leads me into the eyebrows. Drop in the shape of the eyes. Guy's gonna be a little skinny guy. Ears typically go from the um, eyebrow line to the bottom of the nose. Uh, something like this. I'll draw it. Any tips for doing portraits? Uh, yeah, lots of tips. I have um, I have videos and videos dedicated on my uh, YouTube, on my Patreon, um, on TikTok. 
uh, lots and lots of tips for drawing portraits. I have uh, individual TikToks uh, for the for eyes, how to draw eyes, how to draw nose, how to draw mouth, uh, how to draw lips. Yeah, I have I have that's kind of the primary thing that uh, my drawing tutorials are for. But um, just very generally speaking, right here, right now, what would I say? Uh, I would say try to get a template like I'm showing you here uh, that you can kind of fall back to. Uh, I'll show you uh, what I mean right now. Um, so we'll go, we'll go the sh kind of the shape of the head. You know, here's here's a different way to, sh to, to draw a head. I, I don't do it this way typically, but you can draw just two thirds of the head and then you can draw the kind of jaw on top of it. This is a uh, more popularized in a style called the Loomis method. But um, and then you find the center line. We'll draw slightly uh, turned here because this is uh, it's better when you're doing the Loomis method, which is basically a, a you, you think about a circle and then you chop off the sides of the circle and this shape here that you're left with. And then you add a jaw to it. That's kind of the overall shape of the head. And it's this method from the 50s. It's an illustrator named Andrew Loomis developed it. Is that Heisenberg? Uh, no, it could be, though. It certainly could be. I'd have to give him, uh, what? Something like an uh, appropriate hat. And uh, when did he have stubble? need a darker pencil really you have glasses too I think more of a mustache didn't he I guess it there were various parts where he didn't have stubble and did have stubble but yeah, that's probably closer to Heisenberg Yeah, totally. One of history's great characters. Uh, yeah, so let's go over here. Um, so with this one, and then uh, basically the same idea. Find the eyebrow line. And uh, the reason why you want to find the eyebrow line instead of the eyes is that the eyebrow line will, will curve around depending on how the head is turned. You're not always going to be drawing straight on heads, but uh, so you curve it around. We'll drop in the eyes and find the length of the nose. So of course this guy's turned a little bit, so and that's going to have to be reflected in the shape of the nose too. And, uh, and then the mouth has to follow that same line. So this guy kind of has a already a bit of a sinister look to him, doesn't he? The chin. It's a... Uh, it's a good idea to, to draw your fair share of skulls, I think. Um, and that gives you a, a sense of the underlying um, structure, the underlying anatomy. And from there, uh, after you, you can draw a skull realistically, then you can sort of lay the, the musculature and lay the skin on top of the uh, face. And that will give you more knowledge as to where you can put things like this crease for to show a sunken chin or um, this this cheekbone here it's going to come back in and this is an area called the zygomatic arch 
it's a bone right there. And this area here is slightly elevated as opposed to the, the forehead. And that's due to an anatomical structure of the skull called the superorbital torus. And so these a kind of anatomy knowledge is well worth your, you know, you have to learn it once and then you have it for uh, the rest of your time. And it really does come in handy. So I would reckon, recommend that investment in time. You know, it wouldn't take you more than probably a week of, of thorough study to learn all of the shapes of the head and the, uh, the, the, um, the skull and also its um, underlying structures. Could you do a quick skull? Yeah, yeah, I could do a quick skull. You're about to start your tattoo apprenticeship. You're nervous, but very excited. Yeah, that's that's really cool. That uh, that would be really fun. This is something amazing about uh, that kind of job where you are. Um, in the middle, it's so create, creative, but it's really high stakes creativity, right? Because you have um, you can't really make the kind of mistakes that you can make when you're when you're drawing on paper. Um, okay, let's draw a skull now. So the skull is basically divided into two uh, components. You have the, the kind of the whole skull um, all the way up all the way down to the top teeth and then you have the jaw which is which is the mandible and the mandible is the the jaw and the bottom teeth so those are the two um, the two pieces I guess you would say um, so when you're drawing a skull you could you, you can start the same way you would start uh, drawing a face so let's get the eyebrow line in and the center line in. And uh, here's where we typically go. We'll start with a nose and then draw the eyeballs uh, and then the mouth line. Okay. But since this is a skull, we obviously can't draw a nose. So uh, where a nose would go, you are going to have a shape that looks a bit like a teardrop some uh, ligament inside. This cavity goes quite deep. Now just above it you have a bone here that goes um, kind of fans out like this and then very quickly changes shape, uh, changes direction into the main skull. The eyeballs are here and the eye socket is just slightly larger than the eyeballs. This area of the skull is pretty flat. This is the supraorbital torus. And uh, it comes down the side of this eye socket on both sides and then makes a sharp turn. This is your what you would call your cheekbone it's a zygomatic arch it comes down up and then zygomatic arch is up and then this is this is your these are your teeth here there's another uh, suture line here uh, underneath here and here you have uh, these two little holes for your cranial nerves Uh, and then the teeth, so you're going to have one, two, you have four front teeth, okay, and then you have an incisor, which is like a front tooth in width, but slightly pointier. Uh, and then you have what's called a semimolar, but I can't represent them exactly because they're, 
this is the point where your mouth is starting to roll around. So the semi-molar is about one and a half times uh, as wide as, as one of your incisors. But I can't represent that here. And it's also flatter. So it's shorter, flatter, and wider. Uh, and then the molars, of course, are, the, are about twice, but we don't see that here. Your bottom teeth are not as wide as your top teeth, but they do follow the same. So four um, front teeth, two incisors, and then your semi-molars and molars. And then you have these little ridges above and below the teeth that um, a lot of the musculature will uh, connect to. And then you have two more uh, holes here. And these are for your cranial nerves. And, uh, the chin is pointier than you would think, and that's just again for the uh, for the muscles and tendons to hold on to. And then, um, let me see. Now your jawbone kind of goes. It's hard to represent from a front view, but. This bone goes under the, this is a temporal bone. The, uh, the, these, this part of the skull, uh, not amazing to, to show on the front view, but uh, they're made up of um, different, different bones that are fused together. So we have a, a parietal uh, lobe, and a temporal lobe. I made that slightly, I made this jaw too big too. It's gonna bring it in. And there's a hole at the very back of the eye sockets where your optic nerve will go. And that's always the darkest part of these um, Usually people just color it in as dark as possible, but if you are gonna um, have some part of the eye sockets lighter, it has to be, the optic nerve goes right at the bottom in the corner. And that's technically part of your um, um, central nervous system, it's part of your brain. So there you go. I uh, I don't know if I got too much wrong there, but that's uh, there's a skull from memory. Um, talking about the various elements, various parts of it. Uh, why don't pictures of skulls usually include the jawbone? Um, well, usually a lot of the skulls that you find um, are found without the jawbone, but. That's probably one reason, I don't know. Um, okay, let's do another another head here. So let's see, we'll go back to the template, which is draw the eyebrow line, center line, eyes, U-shape for the nose. Let's draw a circle for the end of the nose so we can determine the width of the nose and then determine the width of the mouth by the centers of the eyes. Large circle for the muzzle, small circle for the chin. Drop in the cheekbones. Inverted triangle, top of the nose, leading us into the eyebrows. And then there is, that's the basic structure. Uh, of course, ears, top of the eyebrows, to the bottom of the nose. That's the basic structure. That's pretty much where I start for every face. Is the skull too fat? Uh, I don't know. He's big boned. They're all different sh sizes and shapes of heads. That's, uh, I think that's within the realm of possibility. So we'll just... with a shorter nose here. And 
when you're drawing faces, you can go with an economy of line. You don't have to put every line in. Uh, and the reason is that we as humans have a lot of circuitry in our brains dedicated to facial recognition and pattern recognition. We actually see faces in everything. We see faces where there aren't faces, like in shadows and in bushes and so on. So um, you, uh, you don't have to put in a lot of the detail. Clown. Uh, how long did it take you to get good at faces? Um, thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I used to draw comics, and so I would have to draw a lot of faces for comics. So, yeah, but I don't know how long it would it would take me. I've, I just sort of, it takes a long time. Um, you have to, like, I would draw, I would just do this. I would just do circles and do 30 on a page, and then just do variations all, all eyebrow lines, okay? Now the eyes. Oh, I'll do the center line first. I would do this, 30 on a page, and I would do pages and pages and pages. So I could do three, four, five hundred in a day. And I would do that obsessively. Like, I just have no idea how many faces I've drawn. Um, can I try a cyborg face and make it look like a normal without a nose make it look normal without a nose okay let's do a cyborg here um so for those of you um maybe without english as a first language uh, a cyborg is uh that's that name is short for cybernetic organism so a cyborg cybernetic organism uh, and a cybernetic organism is a being sentient being that is half human and half robot. So uh, you know, technically if you have uh, glasses or hearing aid or, uh, well not glasses, but a hearing aid or a mechanical heart, anything like that, you are a cyborg. So if you have any kind of mechanical help, but um, I think you know, just generally speaking, you're t when you talk about cyborgs, you're talking about this kind of um, near future, dystopian future, um, cyberpunk. There's a whole genre. You know, William K Gibson and Neil Stevenson uh, kind of popularized, popularized this genre where um, everyone lives in a future where you have some mechanical uh, enhancement in some way. And so this particular cyborg is, um, I don't know, what did the person want? Make it look normal without a nose. So a normal like a human. Um, so. It's always something kind of, you know, I'll do a cyborg like this. Let's say, um, let's say they have a, a face plate. The mechanical eye. Um, probably the best example of cyborgs in science fiction are from uh, Star Trek. There's a race of beings called the Borg, and uh, they were exactly that half uh, robot or mechanical, half, um, well, not human, some of them weren't human, but organic. This guy didn't have a nose, right? Let's say he has some kind of. Uh, let's draw some slats in here. This uh, it's not an it's not a human nose, but it's a. Let's say it's a. Olfactory sensor. That's the fancy name for smelling.
did you take any art classes or anything? Any book rec recommendations? Thanks for answering. Uh, thanks for your question, Opium. Uh, yeah, I did take art classes. Uh, I took a Bachelor of Fine Arts in, in, uh, at the university level, at the uh, University of Saskatchewan. I did a BFA in drawing and painting. Uh, but before I, I even got to university, I, I did a lot of drawing uh, on my own. So, um, yeah, you have to... I, I basically, my university was, was more for, uh, to learn how to paint. Let's get some wires and stuff coming out of here. Uh, yeah. So. But, uh, you don't, I don't think you need to have taken classes, not with the amount of material available online. And, um, and even it, um, you know, it's free. Most of it's free. So, uh, like, for example, I have, uh, I have a YouTube, I have a TikTok, there's loads of free art classes uh, on those. I also have paid content if you're, if you want uh, that, I have Patreon. Um, but um, yeah, there's so many creators putting out free content. That's the only way this guy could have survived the apocalypse. He's got bad radiation poisoning. I'm going to have to give him some boils. But he's, he's one of the lucky few who made it. He's just wandering the wasteland looking now for other survivors. He's on borrowed time too, because he's only got three plutonium packs left to charge his augments, augmentations. Um, okay, I love your drawings, thank you, Barney. Sorry, I'm just falling behind a little bit on the chat. Um, love your drawings, thank you. What's the best art you ever made? Um, probably one of my paintings my, for my last solo show. If you go to my website and look at a painting called A Song of Sixpence, you can buy a print of it if, you, if you're there and you're feeling <laughs> inclined. I have about 40 different uh, paintings that are available um, in print form. You can buy a print. But the one that's called A Song of Sixpence um, is probably the best piece of art, single piece of art I've made. And uh, yeah, it's, a, it's an oil painting that, uh, that took me a few months to paint. And it's basically... A whole bunch of stuff on a table but it's incredibly detailed and uh, very realistic it took a lot of work i i went live on tiktok uh, almost every day for two two and a half three months um, to do that painting so i have i have it all documented it's crazy but yeah i'd probably say that one Draw a vampire. Draw famous footballers. Draw an old wizard. Well, I can't draw uh, any footballers from memory. I can draw, I can draw a vampire or a wizard from memory, because there's there's not specific things. Eyebrow line. Find the eyeballs, nose, bottom of the nose, width of the nose, width of the mouth, muzzle, chin, cheekbones, 
temples, ears. It's the same setup every time. Let's figure out if I want a square jaw or a round jaw. Put the bottom lip in there and the shadow underneath it. He's going to have some blood on his chin. Hopefully that won't give me a community guideline strike for gore. Let's say it's chocolate sauce. Oh, I should uh, think about different shaped eyebrows, shouldn't I? Vampires always have widow's peaks. Is that still a thing? Um, maybe this guy does. This guy's going old, old school. He's been watching too many uh, 19, 1920s vampire movies. So he's going to need a cool cape as well. I'm gonna give him a stubble because he's uh, he's been up all night. It would be uh, it would be tricky being a vampire. You think you have to think about a lot of uh, bloodborne diseases and STDs and so on these days. They probably have like safe uh, bite sites. Okay, there's your vampire. You sound like Jordan Peterson. Uh, well, he, I think Jordan Peterson is from Alberta, Canada, and I am from Saskatchewan, which is the next province over. So if you're from the States, um, think Montana, North Dakota area. And uh, yeah, so we have, our, those two provinces have very similar accents. So that's probably what you're picking up. How do you draw lips when the top lip is bigger? Um, when the top lip is bigger than the bottom lip? Uh, yeah, um, I can just do it up here instead of, because if I draw it on one of these, it'll be too small. Um, yeah, so here's the space between the lips. And then the top lip, remember, is basically, you draw a U-shape and then a circle. It's kind of a torus sign, I guess. And, uh, and then two ovals. That's the top lip shape. Uh, and then the bottom lip shape is two ovals. So that's your lip shape, and then it's just a matter of figuring out um, size, so if you just make that bottom lip smaller. Um, if the top lip is usually bigger than the, the bottom lip, then what you're going to end up getting these, this bump here and here. Usually you see these um, when people have lip fillers. You'll see these um, two bumps here and here, something you can pay attention to. There's these little nuances, these little details that can really um, improve or affect your drawing. So sometimes they're all like little bumps, but So I'll just make it massive 
like this and then same thing on this side instead of it being uh, concave it's convex so outward instead of inward and you can see how full that looks already and then usually on these really big lips you also have to have some texture this way and then it's usually a dimple here that's why you do it in two one two and when you're shading the bottom lip you usually shade it toward the center line and then also right at the bottom as well uh, and then in, in addition to that you're going to put some shadow underneath it the top lip is always uh, in darker shadow especially underneath here So, I don't know, That's this looks very unnatural. Uh, that would have to be like somebody's fresh out of a uh, lip injection from a lip injection clinic or something like that. And then I'm gonna come down. Mm, something like that. When did you start doing art? Uh, I started drawing um, just when I was small. I just collected comics and then I started um, you know, tracing my comics because uh, I, you know I loved the characters so much, but I had to wait a full month. So I would trace my comics. I'd stick my comic book on the on on the my bedroom window and then put a piece of paper on top of that and then trace, kind of using the the window as a light box, really. And then I went from tracing to, you know, sometimes the picture wouldn't have an arm or a foot, so I'd have to draw that in. And then I just kind of uh, did that and started learning anatomy and um, did it that way. And uh, it just kind of became a thing that I would just draw uh, all the time, really, obsessively, you might say. Uh, for those of you interested, I do offer um, prints from my website, and I also have uh, Patreon. Uh, if you're interested in learning to draw, you can check out my Patreon at uh, patreon.com slash markliamsmith. And in there have lots of, uh, when you sign up, I think it's the minimum is $3 Canadian, like two fifty dollars American per month. And then you have access to uh, all of the previous content as well. And that's content that I don't offer on my YouTube channel uh, or my uh, TikTok. So something to think about for a couple of bucks a month. It may help your drawing if you're uh, interested. Can I draw Thomas Shelby uh, from Peaky Blinders? I don't know. I don't watch that show. Um, I don't have a TV. I got rid of it because when I had a TV, I watched it, and then I didn't do my art. Uh, but tech, thank you so much for the uh, thirty-one roses. That's amazing. Um, so I don't, I don't actually watch any TV anymore. Um, but uh, I don't know who Thomas Shelby is. But uh, even if I did know who it is, I don't have his face memorized. So I'm just making up these faces right now. Um, but Peaky Blinders is set in the 20s, isn't it? So they have these, uh, let me see, these hats that kind of come down. Let me see, it's like, I don't know, is that right? It's like Paperboy kind of style hats. I think I'm, I might be mixing that up. I'm not sure. Have I applied for an animations company? You work past with flying colors and get the job. Uh, thank you. No, I have. I haven't applied. Um, I. Uh, I. This is just for um, fun and entertainment purposes and teaching people how to draw on TikTok. Um, but uh, my main job is I'm a I'm a painter, 
And so I'm, I'm represented by uh, three galleries for my painting and then one gallery for my uh, digital painting. And um, so I sell my, my paintings to, to collectors. But uh, no, I, I just teach drawing on TikTok and YouTube and Patreon as a, as a hobby, just a way to give back as well and um, kind of inspire other people who, um, yeah, maybe you're looking for a resource that don't have, I didn't, I didn't have any money to spend on those kinds of things, so... But uh, thank you for saying that, though. I really appreciate that. If you uh, have anyone in mind, then uh, yeah, I'm certainly open to the possibility of maybe adding to my time commitments. You never know. Never say uh, no to opportunities, so... This guy's going to show some of this, some of the musculature. There's that super orbital torus. It's kind of the brow brow line here. My lips look like that, but no fillers. Wow, yeah, that's a uh, that is a full. Full set. Um, can you please draw Iron Man? Um, can you draw a Laughing Face, Captain America, Walter White? Um, yeah, on the last one I did something like a Walter White. Well, it was just a regular face that I put a Walter White uh, hat on. But um, yeah, before I, let me see, Iron Man. I don't know how to do Iron Man. Oh, what did his, he had, uh, what was his facial hair like this, right? It was a really thin goatee. It was a really thin mustache. You're talking about Tony Stark. Well, you're, I, you're talking about uh, Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark, right? I, I don't know, I think his goatee was something like that. Uh, not sure. Judge Dredd. Yeah, I, I remember Judge Dredd. That was really cool. Even I remember the comic even before the... Uh, was it uh, Sylvester Stallone, I think, maybe? Back in the day was, in, was the Judge Dredd from the movie. Uh, almost out of battery on my phone, so I'm going to do one more, and then I'll probably uh, end it there, so... Um, yeah, we'll go for, um, so we did different kind, different shaped heads. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me see. Circle, oval, square, rectangle, uh, A triangle. Let's do an A triangle head. Uh, and then, of course, there was V triangle, diamond, and heart. Um, we'll do an A triangle head. So that's a narrow top and a wide bottom. I always think of Kingpin, drawing uh, Kingpin from the Spider-Man uh, comics here. Um, and then, let me see. And then do a female. Yeah, females are not great for A, a uh, train heads. I'll do, uh, maybe I'll do a female after that if my battery doesn't uh, ki kick out uh, on me. Go for a short nose here. I have to do this one quick so I can do a do a female face. Go for that uh, crease right there across the eyes. But even if you are going to crease across the eyes, you still have to have this transition point above the uh, nose. I'll put in some fairly thin eyebrows on this one. When you want to draw um, open mouth, it's important not to articulate all of the teeth, especially at this scale. You, know, you have to do um, just draw 
kind of white shape and then color in the corners. That's usually the best way to simulate teeth or a smiling face. warning on my battery. I really like your art and the way you teach. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Got some classic 80s hair going on here. I just want to uh, quickly say thank you, uh, everyone, for joining me on this Saturday night live stream. I know how important Saturday nights are, so I really do appreciate uh, all of you taking time out of your schedules, whatever you were doing tonight, to uh, hang out with me and tap that uh, screen and send me likes and support. If you want to support me in other ways, uh, I do appreciate that. Um, I do have a YouTube channel. It's the same name as my TikTok name. And... Uh, Really appreciate you following me over to uh, YouTube, Mark Liam Smith. And um, I just started it recently, so I am looking for some support there. And um, yeah, if you could check out that YouTube channel and uh, if you like it, drop me a sub. I uh, would appreciate that. And you know, put, put my channel on and then fall asleep with it on and uh, send me all those watch hours. That would be amazing. Um, yeah, let me see. Oh, I was going to draw a female before I signed off, wasn't I? So let's do, let's do one here. Um, so with the female faces, um, I kind of have some guidelines, I guess, that I do. Um, typically not as many lines in the female face, and uh, that's because, generally speaking, so of course these are general, um, generally speaking, um, females take care of, or women take care of their faces uh, better than men and uh, and uh, so you see usually men are have I don't know maybe a little more wrinkly um, so of course there are exceptions to every rule and but uh, generally speaking um, more feminized faces have fewer lines I would say let's zoom out a bit um, Okay, so eyes, all faces start the same way, regardless of gender, regardless of age. And that's shape of the head, find the eyebrow line and the midsection. Drop in the eyes. Now I have five widths for the eyes. One, two, three, four, five. This circle is the eyeball. Of course, most of that will be covered up um, with the, the eyelids. Then I go for the length of the nose. Then I'll go for the tip of the nose and the width of the nose. After that, I go to the center of the eyes, drop it down to find the width of the mouth. Then uh, go for the muzzle and the chin. Generally speaking, the uh, female faces have uh, softer, uh, less angular lines as well. So and that shall be reflected as well. Top of the nose is still the same thing. It's an inverted um, triangle. And then the eyebrows tend to arch up a little bit more than the males. I think that's maybe uh, from just uh, having them shaped. And uh, usually the uh, eyelashes are thicker. put makeup on just very lightly uh, shading and coloring 
And then you really want to minimize the lines in the nose, just indications on the outside, and then very lightly uh, elsewhere. That's going to go a long way, minimizing how many lines uh, you put. Lips uh, on more feminine faces tend to be fuller. So that's something that I, if I'm just drawing a generic face like this, uh, I will allow that fact to reflect. Top lip is in shadow more than the bottom lip. And uh, yeah, so there we are. And let's go with the chin. Not a really strong jaw. There's a female face. So uh, I'm almost out of battery. I really enjoyed drawing for you guys. I'm going to put the pencil down and thank you again so much for joining me. Uh, if you do get a chance to check out my YouTube, uh, Mark Liam Smith, also uh, Patreon, I sell prints on my website, everything's Mark Liam Smith. All my links are in the bio. Thank you again so much. Have a wonderful Saturday night, everyone. Bye-bye.